God bless you. I want to give you an opportunity to grow in your knowledge on deliverance. Today, we're specifically going to look at why do demons come back after deliverance? I'm going to break down this scripture in Matthew 12, 43. Let's go deep. It says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, Notice here how the unclean spirit goes out of the man. In this specific example, the unclean spirit is not cast out, but the spirit goes out. Why does the spirit go out? He goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. So the unclean spirit goes out. Why? To seek rest. This means that the spirit lacked rest in that house in the first place. We see here that the body is shown as a metaphor of a house. Okay? So why did it lack rest? There must have been a sanctification process taking place. We know that there's a sanctification process taking place because the unclean spirit goes out. It's not cast out in this specific example and when he finds no rest he says i will return to my house the spirit still claims ownership to that house so the spirit must have a legal right to be there what gives the spirit the legal right an open door so now a door is opened and the spirit claims the legal right as his house, right? That door to lust gets opened back up. That door to pornography, that door to wrath, the door to addiction to alcohol, it gets opened back up. And the problem is that the house is empty. We see here that the house was cleaned up, right? It's empty, swept, and put in order. Put in order here, it means beautified, right? It was touched up a little bit. The paintings are hung up on the wall. It's beautified. It's clean. But the problem here is that the house is empty. So the cleaning, the washing, the regeneration took place. The house is swept and put in order but it's empty so what must you do right you must fill that house how can you fill the house the house is filled with the word of god the spirit of truth must fill that house it's the word of god that will strengthen the city it will fortify the walls when you read the word of God, it will allow you to put locks on your door. It will strengthen your house. When you read the word of God, you start to build a fence around your house. You get the lock box on the front of the door. The door is open to an empty house. The demons come back seven times as strong. New age spirituality is the practice of of emptying out a house with a door that's always open. Whatever they want to come can enter. They encounter the supernatural and the spiritual. They experience energy, presence, and spirits, but never the Holy Spirit. There is no covering of the blood. I'm speaking now about New Age spirituality because it is one of the most popular emerging religions. And we as Christians, we need to be informed because people in New Age spirituality will claim to feel the Holy Spirit. Right. 
They love verses like the kingdom of God is within you. But what they do is they go through a practice of emptying out the house, cleaning out the temple, not according to the word of God, but according to the world. What they do is they empty out their house. They even clean it up. They sweep it. They make it look nice, but the door is wide open. They may experience the supernatural. They may experience other spirits but never the presence of God Almighty that comes through the knowledge and the revelation of the blood of Jesus Christ. So why do these demons come back after the deliverance? The house is swept, it's put in order, but it's empty. Now, how can you prevent these demons from coming back? You must shut doors to the demonic right? The door to the spiritual is your eye gates and your ear gates. You not only need to clean out your eyes and your hearts from this pornography, from this lust, from whatever the spirit is, that addiction, that bondage, right? It needs to be cleaned out of that house and the door needs to be shut. And when the door is shut, it needs to be strengthened because we know that temptation will come. Even Jesus is tempted by the devil in the wilderness. We know that temptation is not the sin. It's falling into the temptation is when the sin takes place. So you can hold the deliverance by fortifying your house with the word of God. Write that verse on your heart. For God does not give me a spirit of fear or anxiety or lust, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Three steps to maintain the deliverance. Number one is the word of God. I already touched on that. Number two is prayer. Having a prayerful life, you guard your heart and your mind and you put on the full armor of God by staying in the prayer with the Holy Spirit, spirit filled, spirit led prayer, praying for covering over yourself, for the Lord to guide your steps, to deliver you from the evil one. Even Jesus includes in the Lord's prayer, deliver us from the evil one. And number three is fellowship with the saints. Don't be the house that stands alone, but be the house that is joined into a neighborhood, a community, a gated community. And you got the HOA, the homeowners association, looking over the houses, building up a community and strengthening each other in faith. Multiple houses, multiple multiple people, right? An army is always stronger together. A one-man army is not going to last in the end times when the days are growing more and more wicked. We must be together in community. And these are three ways on how to stay delivered. Don't leave the house empty, but fill it. Fill it with the Spirit. The first thing when you wake up in the morning, be in prayer, be in the word of God. Don't go to your phone, but go to the throne and be in the spirit and the word of God. God bless you. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.